Dr. Walter, first, can you explain to us what is or not? Well, this is a <laughs> this is really a, a difficult item. The reproduction rate, to make it simple, means how many infected patients infect other patients. So if the reproduction rate is one, it means one patient will infect one other patient. If the reproduction rate is three, for example, it means one patient will infect three other, three others. Three is the typical reproduction rate for the flu season, for influenza. What we do now is we calculate a so-called mean reproduction rate, which means uh, you look to a whole week and then you compare the mean of a week with the week before, and then it's different. And the reproduction rate in Germany, if you take the mean now, is something uh, between 0.7 and 0.8, which means one who is infected infects less than one healthy uh, people. So that, that's where we are. When we started the corona pandemia, we looked to the doubling rate of uh, infected people. So how many days does it last uh, for doubling of infected ones? Then we use the reproduction rate. Now we more look to the number of new infections and uh, the numbers, number of patients hospitalized and the number of patients to the ICU. Because the main issue for COVID-19 is not to overrun the healthcare system and not to overrun the hospital capacities. And there, therefore, hospital admittance is a, is a very, very important factor. And if you take this into account now, for about five weeks, the numbers start dropping down in Germany week for week. So we, we at the moment, we have the lowest rates uh, since um, beginning of April. How does the, or I mean, the reproduction rate for coronavirus compare to other diseases? So, as I said, uh, the highest reproduction rate uh, we, we know for classical pulmonary infection is for influenza, for flu, and this is between 2.3 and 3. There are some diseases which are more contact genius, for example, measles. The reproduction rate for measles is 10 or more. It's one of the most contact genius uh, diseases. Uh, but but everything which is one or below one uh, is is no more very contact genius. So with the lockdown and my personal estimation is the biggest issue was to uh, stop uh, big events. So football games, uh, concerts, everything with a huge number of spectators. When we stop this, the reproduction rate came down week for week. So below one means you are on the safe side. If we get an R below one, does that mean that virus is uh, receded? Well, well, that that that's a difficult to answer question. So we we see the number of infected people is going down. The R factor is going down, and and there maybe several reasons for this. One is um, there is no more such a, a strong transmission from one to one, from men to men, um, because of social distancing, uh, uh, masks, whatever, all these issues, all these measures uh, which are part of lockdown. But it also can mean the virus is changing. It's no more uh, contact genius. It's no more so virulent. And the third, what could be, and I, I think that's a very important issue, is our susceptibility as host for the virus is changing. We are less susceptible. And this is something we know from viral disease and mainly from 
pulmonary viral disease, in summertime, we are less susceptible. So uh, innate immune response is better during the summer than during the winter. How can the government uh, ease the coronavirus lockdown while still keeping the public safe? How, how to find the balance? Well, we, we, we need to test. So everybody with respiratory symptoms should be tested. And test capacity is a critical issue. And um, we need to monitor what we, what we test. If the infection rate is going up again and is going up dramatically, uh, new lockdown decisions uh, have to be set up. This will not be easy because uh, you are looking to what happens in Germany now. People are very tired in terms mm -hmm. of lockdown measures. Yeah, yeah you, you mentioned the Germany. In recent days, the OR in Germany has been slightly above one. And you are part of German COVID-19 task force, right? Yeah. Are you concerned? Well, well I, I think Germany did a, a good job. Uh, we we had been good luck, so we were a little bit lucky because we recognized what happened in Italy and Spain, and we were prepared and we started lockdown measures very early. So we we had not the same kind of spread and the same kind of breakdown of hospital capacity which occurred in other European countries. Czech Republic did the same and was very successful. Um, but but now the problems of the uh, uh, loss of economy and uh, the rise in unemployment and all these economic consequences uh, is more and more dominating. Now you mentioned before the, the possibility of the second wave. So yeah. when can we expect it? If it happens, I do not think it will happen during the summertime. So, as normal for respiratory viruses, due to weather conditions, due to uh, susceptibility, there are low rates during summertime. But with the beginning of the autumn, so in October, in November, uh, a second wave is possible, and we will not have a vaccine before next year or the year after. So if a second wave is coming, yeah, we, we will be in problems. And one of the major problem is if a corona, uh, a second corona wave is associated by other infectious diseases, so corona plus influenza would be a disaster. So um, good vaccination programs for everything which could be uh, uh, decreased by vaccination is one of the major goals of German healthcare policy.